Hey everybody, this is Caleb with Common Motor, and today we're going to be going over how to rebuild a 350 and 360 starter motor. This also will apply to the 450 and 550 series of bikes. They are slightly different, but the rebuild process will be virtually identical. So we're going to start by disassembling the starter motor. The first thing we should do is soak these long threaded screws with some penetrating fluid. This will make the removal a lot easier. Once you have these removed, the starter motor then should just come apart into three pieces. This end cap we like to call the planetary gear side. This houses a few small gears and a large bearing for the starter motor. The other side of the starter motor is going to contain the brushes and the commutator, which houses a lot of the electrical components. By brushes, we are actually talking about these small carbon chunks. They ride against the commutator and create the electric current. They're very easy to remove. They pop right out of their housings. And with a small Phillips head screw, they come right off of the attachment plate. Take care to look at these two brushes. One is actually shielded on its wiring. What I would recommend doing is marking the spot where this brush was attached. You will actually have a shielded new brush come in the rebuild kit and you'll need to attach it to the same side. Now with a few taps, the armature should slide right out of the main housing for the starter motor. We're gonna set the armature aside and clean it in a specific process later. For now, let's continue disassembling the starter motor. Next, you wanna remove all these chunks of old gasket. I would take the time to scrape this off with, off with an X-Acto knife and lightly clean it with some very fine steel wool. Now inside you'll find what's called the field coil magnets. We don't recommend ever removing these unless you really have to. They're hard to remove and it's completely unnecessary for the rebuild of the motor. If they're in good condition, leave them. Now that we have the starter motor basically disassembled, we're going to start disassembling some of the smaller sections of it. First, we're going to start with the planetary gear side. You want to remove the two small gears, they'll just slide right off, and we'd recommend actually marking one of the gears and one of the posts with a red sharpie as well to make sure you put that back on the right side again. Once you have this removed, if you turn the planetary gear side around, you'll actually find a small snap ring that should come off with any snap ring pliers. Once the snap ring is off, I would set the planetary gear set up on two small pieces of wood and give it a few light taps with either a plastic or a rubber mallet. This should pop it right out of the housing. If you're having trouble with this, take the time and heat it up with a heat gun. Next pop out the small oil seal in here. Underneath you'll have a small triangular metal clip and right past that you'll have the bearing. To remove the bearing, we just took a socket that was the same size as the inner race and give it a few light taps. This also should come out very easily if you're having issues. Again, heat it up with a heat gun for about 10 minutes beforehand and it should fall right out. We removed the bearing because we're going to repack it with some fresh grease. It's very likely you'll be in the same condition and you'll just need to repack it for, with grease. Lastly, we have an o-ring on this. Take an X-Acto knife and you should be able to peel this old o-ring right off. We will be replacing this with the pieces that come in the kit. Now we're going to start the reassembly process. First thing you want to do is take some fresh grease, we use wheel bearing grease, and pack it in the open side of the bearing. We then went ahead and heated up the planetary gear housing for about 10 to 15 minutes and dropped the bearing right in. The heat expands it enough to where you can just drop that bearing right in the housing without any issue. Make sure you have the closed side of the bearing facing out and the grease pack side facing the inside of the housing. Next you're going to take the triangle clip, snap it back inside the housing. This holds the bearing in place and then put on that oil slash grease seal to keep it all in there. Next you're going to press in the rotating housing. 
and a few taps with the mallet should seat this right back into place. Double check to make sure it still rotates freely. Next, you want to put that snap ring back on. Again, snap ring pliers make this a very easy task. And lastly, we're going to pack a bunch of wheel bearing grease in with the gear setup. You'll notice that when you took it apart, there was virtually no grease in here. This should be greased up very well with wheel bearing grease. Make sure you place the gear that you marked back on the post that you marked so they're back in the same direction. The next part of a rebuild is replacing the bronze bushings. You don't need to do this, but they do come in the kit, and it's likely that they're pretty worn out from years of use. To remove the bronze bushings, you want to soak them both in PB Blaster. Heat up the plates that they're inside of for 15 to 20 minutes. With this larger bushing, we heat it up and we place it on a larger socket as a little stand and used a socket the exact size of the bronze bushing to drive it out. With enough heat and enough time, it only took us one light hit to actually knock this bushing out. The second bushing can be a little bit more complicated since there's no way to knock it out from the backside. You really want to get this one much, much hotter. We heated it for about 20 minutes with the heat gun. Once heated, you can try tapping on the back with a soft hammer and that could knock it out. We found it easiest, as you see in the video, to hit it a few times against a soft piece of wood. This housing is very thin and can be easily broken and cracked. So be really careful and make sure you take the time to get this one nice and hot. With the right amount of time, it really should fall right out. Now throw the new bushings in the freezer for a while, and that will get them nice and small to make them a lot easier to drive into the plate and the housing. We heated up our plate and our housing for about 15 to 20 minutes before driving in the new bushings. The new bushings can be driven in with a few taps of a hammer or just fall in by themselves like you see on this rear housing. You get it hot enough and you freeze the bushing cold enough, it should drop right in. But if not, a few taps with a small socket that's the same size should drive that bushing right in. Now replacing the bushings was really the hardest part of this whole repair. The next thing you're going to do, just so you don't forget, is replace the small o-ring on the positive stud of your starter motor. Next we're going to take the time to clean these sensitive electrical components. If you use some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush, it will actually clean these pieces up really nicely with a light scrubbing. You'll notice for the commutator, we took some super fine steel wool as you see, and we gave it a light sanding on there. This knocks down the glaze from the years of the old carbon brushes running against it and creates a nice fresh surface for the new ones. Now we're going to begin reassembling the starter motor. You'll notice here after we clean this mounting plate for the brushes that one of them is riding on a small isolation pad. This is actually the same side that should be connecting to your shielded wire brush. And that's the one we had marked earlier when we disassembled the starter motor. The new brushes just screw right onto the old posts and slip right in. If you have trouble with these small springs, it really just takes some time and a little finessing, and they should snap right over and hold the brushes firmly against the commutator. Take a look at this close-up to see how we do it. Now that we have the brushes plate assembled, we're going to take a moment here to stop and explain a few of the alignment marks on the body. You'll notice here that we're going to highlight them with red sharpie so you can see them a little bit better. On both the main housing and both top and bottom plates, you'll find a few of these notches that are raised sections in the casting. These actually refer to matching spots on the lids that help you know how to align both top and bottom of the starter motor. These are going to be very important when putting the starter motor back together because they're going to tell you exactly which orientation you need to have the top and bottom and they're going to also help you look out for certain clearances that we're going to be checking. Now if you look at this piece of the starter motor, it's called the armature and it's supposed to have a very precise amount of play back and forth in the housing. Now that play is controlled by the few shims and gaskets 
and thicknesses of a few of the bushings. Since this kit is made for a wide variety of motorcycle starters, and even the manufacturing of each individual starter can differ a little bit from starter to starter, you want to actually be checking the spacing as you go along, and we're going to show you how to do that in just a second. Now you'll find that some of the spacers may no longer be needed, or you may need a little bit extra space taken up in your armature. It's really going to come down to your individual starter and testing it along with us here in the video to make sure you have the proper amount of float back and forth for your armature. Now we're going to start by reassembling this to kind of show you the process of how you're going to check these clearances and spaces of your starter while reassembling it. If you push the little brushes back a little bit, they will actually click out of your way and make it a lot easier to reassemble the whole unit. We usually take a little bit of wheel bearing grease and put it on the end of the starter to hold the shims in place. We don't really want these falling all around and accidentally falling inside the housing somewhere else. Be careful not to get any of this grease on the commutator that you just cleaned though. Now take the armature and slide it into the main housing. Once it's in there, you can actually push the brushes back and they'll snap right against the commutator firmly. Next, you want to replace the large O-ring on the main body and that's what seals the top cap to the top of this part of the starter motor. Replace that and you should be able to align that top cap really nicely with the alignment marks right onto the starter motor. There shouldn't be any large gap in there preventing it from sealing right. Next we're going to insert our first gasket. It's going to go on the top of the armature right before the main plate with a larger bronze bushing. We usually take a little bit of wheel of bearing grease and grease up the inside of this bushing just to lubricate it nicely beforehand. Keep in mind that this plate has a small cutout and that lines up with a small notch in the housing of the starter motor. Now what we're going to do is take a pair of pliers and we're actually going to move, we're going to lift and lower the armature to see how much play it has back and forth and see what's acceptable and what's not. You'll notice here that our armature has quite a lot of play back and forth. We'd actually really say that this is way more than we'd want, which means we have a bit too much space inside this starter motor. And we're gonna wanna tighten this up a little bit. To do that, we're actually gonna remove this bottom gasket that came in the kit. We're gonna reinstall the plate and check the movement again. You'll notice this time there's way less movement, and this is really the amount of movement you wanna be looking for. It should have a little bit of back and forth play, but not, more, not much more than that. It's still able to spin freely even when pushing down the plate. Next, we're going to check the spacing with the top gasket in between this and the planetary gear setup. We took the gears out just to make this easier to check because they'll fall out if not. Insert the top gasket and line up your housing with your alignment marks. And take a look at the gap. You'll notice on ours that there was much too big of a gap in the top casing. Our gap was actually almost too big to where it wouldn't even click into place with the starter motor. You really want this housing to sit flush. For us, we found that we had to also remove this top gasket. Now, if you're wondering what are we going to do since we removed both gaskets, that is actually what the RTV is for. Here in the video, we're using some Honda Bond HT, and it's very similar to an RTV compound. And really, we're just going to lightly spread this on both sides of this main plate, and that's going to give us plenty of sealing for the starter motor. It really doesn't need much. In our case, since we're unable to use the gaskets, this would be more than adequate to seal up the starter motor. This is a little bit different than our Honda Bond 4 that we sell on our website. You really want to use an RTV type compound for this. Take the RTV and spread it very thinly on the edges that you need it. Whichever part you're not using a gasket, you need to make sure you have a little bit of this on there. Once we did that, we reinserted the plate into the starter motor, put the top housing back on, and checked our gap again. You'll notice this time our top cap snaps in really nicely and there's not even really a visible gap here on the video. This is really what you want to be looking for. Now that we've got it all reassembled, we're going to take the long bolts, put a little bit of anti-seize to make it easier to undo this if we ever need to open it up again in the future, and tighten it back down. There's no specific torque value for this, but if you tighten them as much as you can by hand with a hand screwdriver, that should be plenty to hold it together. 
So before we put this back on the bike, there's two more steps. Firstly, you wanna make sure you put on a fresh O-ring on the end of the starter motor, as you see we're doing right here. And second, we're gonna show you how to test the starter motor on the bench before you go through all the work of reassembling it on the bike. So what we did is we clamped our starter motor up in a vise and took some small jumper cables and connected them up to a small motorcycle battery. Positive goes to the nut on the starter motor, negative just goes to the housing of the starter motor. And we're gonna take the negative and tap it against the end of this small battery and make sure it works. You'll notice and you can hear that our starter motor spins up fast without any issue and seems to be working really great. Once again, make sure you check out our starter motor rebuild kits. We have them for the 350 and 360 and also the 450, 500, and 550 motorcycles. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe right here down below for more videos just like this. See you in the next one.